Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis and happy Halloween. Today I wanted to show you a quick video on how you can make a pumpkin in Blender. So let's just jump right into it. Starting out, we've got this default scene here. I'm going to press X on this cube and delete it. And I'm going to go ahead and leave everything else in here because we'll just use that lighting to show you the pumpkin. Uh, I'm going to press Shift A to add a mesh. And I'm going to click on Mesh and go into UV Sphere. Now, my default options are all down here. I can change these before changing anything else. I want to go into this segments, rings, and radius. Uh, normally, these are the only things you want to change. In this case, I'm just going to change the number of segments. Uh, a one meter radius on a pumpkin is actually pretty huge, but I really don't care about scale right now. I'm just going to make a simple pumpkin to make this video as fast as possible. Uh, so anyway, moving on. So the next thing we want to do is on this sphere, I'm going to tab to get into edit mode. And you can see here I am in vertice mode right now. You get into vertice mode by pressing one on your keyboard on the home row. Um, so you've got one, if you press two on the home row, you're gonna get edge mode and three is gonna get face mode. What I wanna do is go back and click one and then click on this vertice and I'm gonna press X to delete this vertice, but I don't actually wanna delete the vertice. I just want to dissolve vertices because I want to fill it in with the face. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom. I'm gonna press X and on this menu, I'm gonna go dissolve vertices. And now I have this pumpkin with these flat tops and flat bottom. We're gonna show you why we do that in just a second. But now I want to make the ridges on this pumpkin. So normally they have like eight segments. So I'm gonna do shift, alt, and I'm pressing alt to get the line and I'm pressing shift to get the multi-select line. So I'm shifting and alting on each of these lines. If I click between these dots, it's gonna select that line there. So the next, trick we're gonna do, oh, let me get this last line, is we are wanting to scale those in just a little bit, right? So I want to scale that, oh, probably not very much. So I'm gonna press S to scale, but I'm gonna press Shift Z because I do not want to scale on the Z axis. If you press Z, it's going to only scale on the Z axis, which is not what we want. We only want the X and Y axis. And so a way to do that is to press Shift Z, which says scale it on everything but Z. So I've pressed Shift Z, and now I can scale it in and add a little bit. And you can see it's pretty blocky, but we can do things to change that. I'm just gonna keep it very simple here and just gonna scale it in uh, like that for my pumpkin for this purposes. Now, if you wanted this to be smoother, you can just create more segments when you create that sphere at the beginning. Um, and you can also have more of these horizontal segments too. But like I said, I'm keeping it very basic. So one other thing I wanna do though, is I want to now select these top rings and I wanna scale those down because I wanna flatten it. So the first thing I can do is I can just select everything, which you see here, I haven't selected everything. If I press Z in edit mode and I press wireframe, it's gonna show me everything and I can go to a side view and select all and now you see everything selected. What I want to do is now scale this maybe to, on the Z axis only, to 0.8 maybe. And that looks about right. But you notice though that the pumpkin still has a bit of an issue if we go back into solid mode by pressing Z. We can see that our pumpkin um, is uh, not like, doesn't have a little divot on there. So one thing we can do is we can say, okay, well let's grab that top and we'll say scale and then Z and bring it down. And it's like, oh. That's, that's okay, that's pretty, I guess that's decent, but maybe that's not exactly what we want. I'm gonna press Z, and then go back into wireframe mode, and then I'm gonna go press one on the numpad, and pressing one on the numpad puts me into the front view. And from this front view, I'm going to go into proportional editing. And proportional editing is right here. You click on this button, and it gives you these options for smooth, sphere, root, and you can play with these, play around with them, um, but I'm gonna click on smooth, and then I'm going to go ahead and press G to grab it. And you see this white circle? This white circle kind of gives it uh, uh, an area with which it's going to like grab things and move them. So the bigger that circle, the more influence it has around the neighboring selection. So you're gonna move your selection, but proportional editing restricts what also gets moved along with it. So when you're doing proportional editing, you can move this around. So I only wanna move this on the Z axis, and I wanna move this down a bit. And now you can see with proportional editing, I'm able to kind of get that a little bit better than what I had before. Um, a little more, I'm, I'm grabbing the other uh, vertices along with it and it looks a lot better that way. So I'm gonna grab it like this and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna press Alt 
and then click on the ring down here. And then I'm gonna press one on the numpad to bring it in the side view. Then I'm going to grab it and press Z because my proportional editing is still on. I can now grab it and I'm gonna bring that down a little bit uh, and then bring this up. And now I have this kind of pumpkin shape. So I'm gonna make it a jack lantern. We're gonna apply a texture here in just a second. So the next thing we wanna do, I'm gonna press Z and go into solid mode. And now I wanna go into face mode. So I press tab to jump back into edit because I keep tabbing in and out of it. I don't mention when I press tab, but um, tab to go out of edit mode. We're in object mode here. Tab to go into edit, and you can see that we're editing vertices. So if I press three to go into face mode, I can select this face and I can extrude it. And I'll extrude that up. And then I'm gonna press S to scale it down. Now I still have proportional editing on. I don't want it on anymore. So I'm gonna go up here and turn proportional editing off. And then I'm going to press S to scale. And I might click on two. I'm gonna press two to go into edge mode. And I'll press Alt and I'm gonna select that edge. And I'm gonna scale this maybe in a bit, maybe out, who knows. And so you can see we have this very rudimentary pumpkin shape here. And now let's go ahead and start applying a texture to it. So that's the next step. So we're gonna go into UV editing up here. And you can see on the left, I have my texture, which isn't there yet. So what I'm gonna do is go find the file where that's at. I'm gonna, I have a pumpkin face. I'm gonna drag it in here and you can see my pumpkin face now. But that's only the first step. The next step we need to do is go into uh, the object. I'm gonna tab out of object mode uh, and I'm gonna go or tab, into, tab out of edit mode and go into object mode. And I have my pumpkin here uh, and I'm going to apply materials. So we're going to go to materials here and say material, just click on a new one. And uh, this is going to apply to this object. And what we wanna do is find our texture, our base color. We're gonna click on that. And we're gonna say image texture and since I've already dragged that pumpkin face in, I can go into pumpkinface.png. And if you want to see it, you can go into the viewport shading and you see, oh, that looks hideous. That doesn't look like anything I want at all. So I'm going to go into the face mode and press, uh, press 1 to go into the front. This is the front of the pumpkin, so you can see the face is off to the side. It's down a little bit. That's not what we want at all. So what we can do now is go into... Uh, edit mode, so I tab to press into edit mode on this side, and then I go to UV, and I can say project from view. And if we go over here, we want to select everything over here, and you can see, oh, here's all of our, oh, sorry, let me take a step back. We need to select all of the objects that we want to, uh, to project, right? So I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna go press Z, and go into wireframe mode, and select everything. And now you can see it's all selected over here. They've made little cubes out of all this. All these faces are square. So we're going to then go into UV with everything selected. And we're going to say project from view. And now we have this pumpkin and we can scale this and grab it and bring it down and just make it large enough to fit over there. And now we can press Z over here, go back over here and go into solid. Actually, we can go into Z material preview and now we have our pumpkin face and maybe we want to select um, we're going to select this top surface we're going to go three to go into face mode select this surface and we're going to do a little trick here you can press control plus to expand your selection to just the entire top so if that doesn't make sense I'm going to do it again we're going to click on the top here we're in we three on our num not on our numpad three on our home row to go into where we do face selection, I click that top face, and then I press the control key, and I click plus, and so that expand that expanded my selection to this stem. If I press control plus again, you'll see it keeps going out one ring. And if I press, press control minus, it goes back. So control plus, control minus, that's a pretty handy tool to have. And now I can select all this, scale this down, and we'll bring it into the black. And now we have a black stem, and there you have it. That is our very simple jack-o'-lantern, and hopefully you've learned some pretty cool tools in Blender. Uh, pretty simple, but we use some advanced techniques with proportional editing, UV editing, uh, and hopefully this is a good tutorial, brief enough to keep your attention, but learn something 
pretty cool in my opinion. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.